Hey there, it's Sci Team. Welcome to the pilot video project of UBC Sci Team. As we usually come to you as the professional and personal development events on campus, this time we come to you a little bit differently. A lot of students miss out on our events due to time conflicts or simply because they commute to campus. We want to connect with you online to worthwhile moments and intriguing talks that any UBC science student should have access to. For our pilot video, I am super excited to bring to you Dr. Jay Wickenden, a faculty member in the Department of Chemistry. Now, he is well known among students for his approach to course that many of you will take, Chem 233. Today, he will not be talking about reaction mechanisms, but instead will discuss strategies to succeed in learning in a large lecture hall. Get this, where you sit in the lecture hall matters, and researchers have investigated this. There is actually a connection between your seat in the lecture hall and your final grade in the course. Without further ado, take it away, Dr. Wickenden. All right, hello everybody. My name is Dr. Jay Wickenden. I am a faculty member in the Department of Chemistry, and I'm going to talk to you today about one of the things you will encounter uh, usually in, as a science student here at UBC, which are very large classrooms and the best way that you can learn within those classrooms. Now where you sit in a lecture theater actually matters. A study that was done by both Perkins and Wyman investigated where students were sitting and how that affected their grade overall in the course. Now students were broken up into groups of relatively the same GPA and ordered and instructed to sit in various locations within a room. So here's a pretty accurate representation of HEB theater, HEB 100, where a lot of common uh, science courses are taught to undergraduates. Now what this study investigated was that people that were sitting in the back of the room, so for example, in this area here, were six times more likely to receive an F than those individuals who were sat at the front of the room down here. In addition to that, they found that students that were sat at the back of the room for the initial part of the course were more than likely to uh, not show up compared to people that were sat at the front of the room. And the overall story here is that the further away a student was sitting from the professor at the front of the room, the less likely they were to receive an A for that particular course. Now one of the things you're going to encounter in large lecture theaters are individuals who are going to distract you from trying to learn. For example, if I was to start telling you about a bimolecular substitution mechanism where an O- minus or an alkoxide starts a displacement reaction and does it forms an ether. Now in that last scene, what was I talking about? Honestly, try and think about it, but what color was Andy's shirt? That's how easy it is to be distracted within a large lecture. So being distracted in a large lecture theater is a common thing. Uh, and again, we have our uh, pretty accurate representation of HEB Theater or HEB 100, where many of you will take science courses in your first couple of years here at UBC. Now, another study that was done by both Sena and Weston investigated what happened when students had access to electronic equipment and could multitask. Now, multitasking can be a variety of different things, but you can view that as, oh, I'm going to check Facebook and my email while I'm also listening to Dr. Wicken at the front of the room ramble on about organic chemistry. Now what that study found was that students that were messing about and multitasking throughout a lecture were more likely to receive a lower grade compared to those who did not have access to that same electronic equipment. So what we're saying here in this pretty accurate representation of HEB is we will pick this student here and this student has access to a laptop and they're multitasking. Their grade was found to be approximately 11% lower than those who did not have access to a, a, a laptop or a, the ability to multitask. Now the interesting thing that came out of this study uh, involved the students who were in within viewing plane uh, of this individual who was multitasking. So in this particular instance, we are talking about these students right here. They can all view what the multitasker is doing on their magical laptop within the lecture theater. Now, I want you to think what you suspect the effect on their grade was. None of these people had access to laptops or anything. They're just seeing what this individual is doing. Now, a common answer that I get when I ask this question is, oh, you know, the grade's about 5.5% lower, which is about half the depression here, or it's the same. Is that what you answered? About 11% lower? To be truth be told, the average depression in grade for these individuals here was 17% lower than those who did not, or compared to those who didn't have any viewing plane of that whatsoever. The take home message here is that if you're sitting within a region of area where you can see somebody messing with a laptop, you're more than likely to receive a lower grade uh, than if you sat any anywhere else in the room. Now I know many of you may say I'm not going to bring a laptop to lecture, that's fine, but I want you to think about cell phones are now essentially computer devices and you can access Facebook and everything else that you ever wanted to on there. So uh, take note of that and pay attention uh, when you're in our lectures.
So if I was going to give you some advice to the new incoming students at the University of British Columbia, I would tell you that when you arrive to your first lecture in a larger theater, uh, choose where you sit carefully. Uh, think about it ahead of time and pick a spot where you can come and engage with the material that's being taught to you at that time. Uh, learning is not a spectator sport. You can't just sit back and by osmosis it's going to come in. You need to engage with the person at the front of the room. Uh, and more importantly, when you're in these large lecture theaters, be mindful of those around you. Be nice to each other. Wow, and I thought the best seats in the lecture hall was always the ones for the easiest escape. Thanks, Dr. Wickenden. If you have any suggestions for speakers or content, send us an email at sciteam at science.ubc.ca. If you enjoyed this video, give us a share or a like so we know to bring to you more content in the future.